Uh, good afternoon, my fellow degenerates. We're at an elevation of about 5,100 feet in a land known for its uh, numerous uh, kinky Mormon sex dungeons that would be South Central Utah. Uh, as you can see, I'm looking over a desert wash, and it's got all that nice pink uh, eroded sand coming from the underlying formation of sandstone that's roughly Triassic in age. That would be 200 and about 205 million years old right there. Uh, and this uh, sandstone is capped by a much younger... Uh, overlay of uh, a volcanic flow of basalt that uh, that would be about 700,000 years old right there you can see those black basalt boulders laying on top of the much lighter colored beautiful coral pink sandstone now as you can see we got a nice assemblage of typical high desert shrubs we got your juniperus osteosperma you got uh, some pinion pines in the mix and uh, you got the you know, more more deep in the wash because it's a more of a moisture loving plant. You got some uh, Rocky Mountain juniper, juniper scopulorum with that nice blue flat sprays of foliage. Also got your uh, wonderfully smelling Artemisian tritata, that uh, great basin sagebrush. Some people tend to not like that smell so much, but I I, I tend to enjoy it. Also got the Quercus gambellii, a pretty common a uh, Central North American well. West, I'd call it more of a southwestern plant, west and southwestern plant, uh, Quercus gambellii. And then you also got a, another shrub oak right there. But I want to take you down. We're going to look at this plant right here. It's a, what you would call an apocinaceous bastard. So it's in the milkweed family, but it's not in the milkweed subfamily. You can see this guy right here. Okay, you know, it's already gone to fruit, but you can still see that those flowers, when they were going off, uh, were a beautiful blue color. Might have uh, might have also just been kind of a white color too. Maybe they faded to blue. But uh, either way, there's the fruits right there. Typical apocinaceous. Almost looks like a legume. Okay. I want you to pay attention though because, you know, members of the milkweed family, the milkweed subfamily, tend to have their foliage uh, in arranged opposite each other. Whereas this uh, plant, being it's not the milkweed subfamily, it's the larger apocinaceae family as its foliage uh, arranged alternately. But it's still quite glabrous. Uh, touching it, I can uh, I can definitely smell it from here. It doesn't smell too nice. It smells kind of uh, putrid and chemically, chemical-y. Could you say that? I guess you could say that, you know, if you're a linguistic slob like I am. Now, also pay attention to this, though, because if you pull off one of these, uh, one of those leaves right there, you could see it does bleed that toxic latex, okay? This is not something you want to throw in your mouth, okay? Unless you want to play a joke on the herbalists, you know? The uh, the medicinal plant people, uh, which, you know, I fully encourage. You could tell them it's good for something and, uh, you know, put it in their ass or whatever. I always just say put it in your ass because, you know, I just, I, I guess it's a way for me to subtly make fun of people who only view plants as important uh, if they can benefit humans. Look at this beautiful uh, basalt right there. Just, uh, you can see, well, first off, you can see the vesicles in it, the gas bubbles, okay? But also, it's been just eroded over the last 700,000 years, eroded, weathered, and kind of rounded out and carved. Very beautiful right there. All right, moving on. Let's go. Okay, so here we are a little bit further down a the wash. There's that the Juniperus uh, Astheosperma. And here we got the Quercus turbinella, okay, which is a shrub oak with a nice blue color to it. And uh, the leaves can occasionally be a little bit bigger than this. Notice how uh, those lobes come to a very fine and a uh, sharp point. Come in a desert shrub oak right here, at least in uh, Utah, northern Arizona. You know, areas of the high desert. Again, we are at 5,100 feet, so it makes a nice duff. This is an evergreen bass right here. Let's take a look at this guy, though. Remember the pea family, Pediomelum, tenuiflorum. Okay, those tiny pea flowers with their banner wings and keel. The banner wings and keel structure, and uh, you know the leaves can be this nice uh, tridentate uh, or dentate. What would, what would you call it? Trifoliate, a trifoliate the shape to it, or they can uh, be more palmate, more like a lupin with the uh, with five leaflets right there. Okay, but it loves the wash. Doing very well here. Interesting plant, glistening in the sun, in this uh, this fucking heat, which uh, woke me up. Uh, rather early this morning you know now you can see the rocks here are uh, of all different kinds okay there was a uh, found some petrified wood actually but i threw it back in the truck what i suspect to be petrified wood also got some nice uh, oh yeah there you go 
that that could be could that be or is that the that might just be some it might be a fake out it might be uh just the striations in a in an igneous rock but you can see you got a whole bunch of nice stuff right there you know oh look at it oh that's just a conglomerate i thought that might have been a rather large uh, phaneritic igneous rock but uh, moving on along here we go uh, you got a species of pinion pine now this would be the uh, colorado pinion pine being that it's got two needles per fascicle not just one okay this is Pinus edulis. Pinus monophylla is another species of pinion pine that you get in California, in southern Nevada. But now we've moved east a little bit, and, uh, you know, get a little bit more summer rain, a little bit higher up, different species. Uh, now, that I, now that I think about it, okay, and the harder I look at it, this actually does look like petrified wood. And I've seen a lot of petrified wood. Uh, <laughs> wonder how old that is, and I wonder where it was washed out of. Because I've only found a couple pieces in this wash. Anyway, let's look at this plant over here. Okay, it's in the genus Penstemon. Who doesn't love a Penstemon? There's like 900 of them. Okay, but uh, they're all pretty cool. All pretty interesting. Easy to just write them off. And then uh, you get up close and you look at those flowers. And uh, you can see this one actually is pretty notable for having that little beak. Penstemon rostroflorus. The beaked Penstemon. Well, Penstemon's got opposite leaves. You can see that right there. Let's get a nice uh, money shot of that Corolla again. Holy shit. Yeah, you see the sepals? Get the sepals nice next to my filthy fucking fingernails. And uh, there's, uh, there's that Corolla with that little lip coming on, that little spur. That's nice right there. A North American favorite, this genus. Just growing on the margins of this uh, dry wash. Yeah, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with the petrified wood. All right. wonder how old. I wonder if it's the age of this uh, volcanic flow. And there's uh, quite a large cinder cone behind me. I don't know if you could see it up there. Or if it's uh, much older. Or if it's the age of the sandstone. Probably younger than the sandstone. Oh, look, here's Quercus gambellii. Okay, much different, much bigger leaves than at the uh, Quercus turbinella. You got a glabrous adaxial surface, a glabrous up, upper side. And then uh, you flip it over, and you got a nice little indumentum of fuzz on that uh, abaxial surface. The underside right there. Fucking, this oak is everywhere in the Rockies. In the... Uh, the western states that aren't the California. Massive, uh, massive sagebrush. You know, you could take this stuff. When I got sent to this fucking program for degenerates when I was a kid, we would, they taught us to take this stuff. You make a little nest out of it. And, uh, you know, when you're doing hand drill fires, you make a little nest out of this stuff, wrap it in a wreath, and uh, blow your, uh, your little ember in there and light it up. It goes up quick. Nice, uh, nice persia right there, rosaceae. All right, moving right along. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, so you could see all the sandstone beneath it, all the eroded sand, and uh, there's even a couple areas where you can actually see the sandstone that this stuff was eroded from itself. But uh, then you just got this thick cap of basalt. Okay, and being that we are in southern Utah, you can hear the. Uh, the mouth breathers with their little ATVs with their lawnmower engines and shit, you know, doing donuts, driving around. I don't know what they do. They drive around. They're, it's kind of cute. They're like the, they're like toddlers, you know, when you give them, what was it, a big wheel? No, what is those things, those plastic cars that the rich kids used to get? You know, you, uh, it's like a, it's like a plastic toy car the kid can sit in. You know, it's kind of like that. It's kind of cute. Okay, except it's a grown man who's about 40 pounds overweight. No comment. Anyway, look up there, you can see that uh, Juniper scopulorum right there. A little bit different of a form, you know. More fastidiate. Fucking bromus is everywhere, that invasive grass. Okay, so then, arriving here, you can see there's been some excavation, okay? Just like a little, uh, 
A little mole, mole hole. Oh, look, it's an Ipomopsis. Polymoniaceae, look at that. Who doesn't love the Phlox family? Filifolius leaves. Filiferous. Okay, so as I was saying, there's been some uh, there's been some excavation here, just like a little rat hole. Let's walk up in and see what we got up there. Well, first though, we got a species of roos, Anacardiaceae, the poison oak family. There's the little fruits right there, all sticky and shit. See that? Looks like uh, you got some galls on those leaves too. And then uh, right here we got a cave. And it looks like someone just excavated the sandstone beneath this uh, hard basalt. Because it will require some energy to uh, crack open that basalt. So that's not the basalt they're working. They were working a pink sandstone. Oh yeah, okay. It's kind of creepy. I don't really feel uh, inclined to go in there at all. But uh, I'll show it to you. How about that? Okay, we can go in a little bit. It smells like piss. Maybe it was just somebody keeping a fucking, you know. Yeah, that's about enough. I don't need to go in there no more. Maybe it was just, you know, it might have just been somebody dug this to keep shit cool in the summer. Could have been a rancher. Nice bromus. I think that's rubrum. When I say, that was a sarcastic nice, because that plant's fucking terrible. Oh, look, you got a nice Nicotiana. Now, this is not a sarcastic nice. There's that uh, tobacco again. Sticky as hell. Look, the beetles are stuck to it. Oh, no, maybe not. But highly glandular, like all Nicotiana species. And highly smelly too. Smells kind of uh, kind of like chemicals. All those secondary metabolites that uh, members of this genus produce to discourage uh, insect herbivory. There's the uh, crater, and uh, there's some nice ephedra, aka the Mormon tea. Get them all hopped up so when they go into their kinky sex dungeons, they're all ready. You know, real hat. Nice uh, kind of serious triglocidiatus, also known as the uh, Mojave mound cactus. You know, but I wonder, how does it do that? That fucking rock has got to be so hot, you know? It's black, it's in the sun. It's probably, uh... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's got to be 120 degrees, maybe. And there it is. You can still see the old flowers on it. Love that plant. You know, and again, sometimes you see them where those spines uh, have kind of done the phyto camouflage thing that cacti do where the, the spines kind of conceal the plant and they they come to almost resemble grass blades dried grass blades you can see the uh, basalt is just kind of coming apart oh it's nice out here look it's the beginnings of a small canyon sagebrush gets massive here look at it Anyway, it's too bad I didn't catch this Samsonia going off. That's that Apocynaceous uh, bastard I was just showing you right there. You can see the flowers are blue. What a stunner that must have been. But a day late and a dollar short. You can see the fruits maturing here. Of course, the ones in the sun are more, uh, more further along. There's the little follicle right there. Anyway, that was a quickie. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, that's all I got for you this morning. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Here we go, nice Colorado Plateau endemic right here, Shepardia rotundifolia. Produces edible berries and it's in the family Eleignaceae, which you don't get uh, too many of in uh, Western North America. Look at those glistening leaves. Look at that texture, huh? That's something else, it's pretty nice. Flip them over, you got a goddamn indumentum that's just like uh, decaying velvet, you know, or some sort of uh, 
weird uh, polyester material that falls apart when you touch it. It was manufactured 30 years ago and, uh, you know, whose prime components uh, are compounds which have now since been banned uh, by the EPA, you know. But, of course, uh, don't think about that when you're looking at this plant. This is a small one. They get rather large, up to four feet tall. You can see there's a, there's a rather large one over there. Would have loved to catch it flowering, but it uh, seems I might be late. And then over here you got a, you got a nice sclerocactus, a fish hook cactus. Look at those uh, recurved ends of those spines. Missed the flowers on this, probably flowered a month ago. There's the fruits maturing right there. And it'd be on the, uh, the red sandstone. Some nice uh, agates and jaspers coming out of this sandstone right there. There's a nice, uh, there's a much bigger uh, shepherdia. Look at those goddamn leaves. Again, endemic to the Colorado Plateau. What a beaut. And you got a good, uh, good looking areogonum. One of the buckwheats. A nice basal set of basal leaves. And then sends up a uh, inflorescence about 10 inches tall. A little bit of mature though. Bright green inflorescence, glaucous and uh, and woolly uh, leaves right there. Look at that axial surface. It's got a fucking indumentum. Ooh.